Yes, we're finally back with ICO a bit later than I'd planned to be, but uh, we are here anyway, which is the main thing. And uh, it is version uh, 0.35. I know there's been some uh, updates, and uh, apparently some of the earlier stuff has been reworked a bit. We're not going to play through all that now, but it's uh, definitely worth checking out if you uh, are playing it yourself. What we are going to do is pick things up where we left them after Judas just finished talking to his mother. Dawn's light streaming into Crater Hope basked the wharf in a cool bluish glow. Steam was billowing out of the marketplace booths with the distinct aroma of seafood in the air. There was so much to take in at once. I looked around at all the colourful foodstuffs kept under the watchful eye of their vendors, the droning tune of stoves. Being here without Mom at this time of day made the normally boring wharf kind of exciting. From the corner of my eye I spotted a tank of glowing lobsters and bolted towards it. They were huge. They posed at me from behind the glass with their giant claws stuck out. Suddenly they all scattered as one was scooped right out of the tank by a large meaty paw. You plan on buying one, lad? I turned to see the lobster in the hands of a walrus, still struggling as he brought it towards a simmering pot. I... I shuffled awkwardly, not sure what to say to him. The walrus chuckled and popped the lobster into the pot, sealing it to a boiling fate. I walked away for the chance to speak again, my enthusiasm now replaced with the creeping realisation I'll have to converse with people alone. It made my stomach uneasy. I reached into my pockets to feel around for the ration tickets. Fortunately, all four of them were still there. I went over the list Mom drilled in my head last night. Uni, scallops, mussels, and the fourth extra ticket being whatever else I want as a small present. I still can't believe Mom got her hands on four tickets this week. My mind raced trying to decide what I should get with them. But first, the essentials. I think Uni is the closest to my current location now. I scanned the marketplace and spotted the distinct orange coloration of sea urchins being sold just a few paces to my right. The place wasn't super busy, fortunately, so I made my way to the front with a ration ticket clenched in my paws. I was just tall enough for my eyes to peer above the countertop, where I was met by the gaze of a thin sea otter with steam must fur. Oh, what can I get for you, kid? I looked at the bright mounds of uni and tried pointing at it. The otter looked confused. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, what you need? I... I... It felt so weird talking to a stranger like this. Do I sound stupid? I, I want the uh, urchin, the uni. Ah, all right, speak up then, would you? The otter gave me a smile before packing a mound of uni into a box and sliding it over to me. I exchanged a ticket for it and he bid me a farewell as I hauled it away. I did it, I bought something. A smile crept along my face as satisfaction surged in my core. Now, what's next? Scallop and mussels? I looked around for a shellfish cellar and spotted an orca with a long line for an assortment of shelled creatures. I stood in line, reciting what I'd say to him when it was my turn, and before long the time finally arrived. I walked up to the orca who looked positively massive now that I was closer. What do you need, kid? Uh, scallops and mussels. I said with a bit more confidence in my voice. The orca gathered two tickets worth of the shellfish and popped into another box he placed on the counter. Well, I've got one now, yeah? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. I picked up the box, which was much heavier, and said goodbye. That should be everything. This isn't so bad. Now I've one more ticket left. Hmm. I wandered around with the boxes in tow, looking for anything that seemed interesting. It was only a few minutes before something caught my eye. A scrawny otter selling barnacles sat at his stand with a brilliant necklace of naked pearls strewn across his body. I stared for a long time, eyes glued on their brilliant surface. One more ticket. I wonder. Mom would love to have a pearl necklace. She'd be so happy when I bring it home. Could I? Hmm, maybe it's best if I just use it for food. But that glint from his necklace was captivated. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Well, it's worth a try. We have enough food to last us for a while. This ticket was all Mom's hard work, and I wanted to give her something nice. It's decided then. 
I balanced the boxes precariously in my right arm before making my way towards the barnacle stand. The otter gave me a look and his whiskers twitched. Who wants something? I, uh, hey, I... How would I ask this of him? Do, do you have any pearls? He cocked his brow strangely and looked at his necklace. You want this thing? The otter scoffed. Hell no, kid, you're trying to rip me off. I took the ration ticket out and showed it to him. He eyed it suspiciously for thinking to himself. I'm not giving the necklace up, but... The otter looked around the stand for anyone watching. Come with me. He pointed towards the alleyway behind his stand and vanished into the shadows. I gulped. Mom, she doesn't have to know, right? I carefully stepped into the darkness to be greeted by the shadowy figure of the otter leaning against the barnacle stand. All right, kid. You really want to give this up? I nodded. The otter pondered for a moment, his whiskers twitching as he thought deeply. A smile crept along his face, his crooked teeth glinted in the darkness. All right, then. I can get you something. You see, I used to be an oyster seller, so I got a lot, lot left over from those days. Here, yeah, just hold on. I think I've got some left over. The otter opened up the back door to his booth and shut it tight, leaving me in silence. He took a few minutes before popping back out with something in his pocket. It was a small box like the ones I had currently. He shook it around and I heard the sound of things rolling around inside. There she is. You had one left. Now, kid, I'll be one ticket. I handed it over, eyes glued on the box. The otter chuckled. Yeah, now you enjoy that, all right? Thanks. My heart leapt. I grabbed the box and ran back into the marketplace to get home as quickly as possible. I was still running as fast as my stubby legs could carry me until I had left the wharf altogether. I took a turn to the right where the beach stretched towards a residential district so far away. I must have ran nearly halfway there by the time I had to sit down and catch a break. I placed the boxes on the sand as the morning light began to brighten up. The box of pearls was still clenched tightly in my paws. I shook it around once again. Wait, something's off. That sound. They're not rolling. Pearls are supposed to be round, right? My chest sunk as dread filled its cavity. No, oh, please no. I reluctantly opened the box. I could feel my stomach twist itself into knots. Inside the box weren't pearls. Barnacle shells. Empty, crusty barnacle shells. I dropped the box on the sand. I was shaking. Tears started to well up in my eyes. I wanted to scream. I kicked the box into the ocean, the barnacles being tossed one by one into its dark depths. I sat down by the food and screamed into my tail. What am I going to say to Mom? What will she say to me? How do I explain this? I cried, a pathetic child sitting in the middle of the beach crying his eyes out. Mom's disappointment. She worked hard to get that extra ticket this week. She was so excited to give it to me. Now I messed it up. You idiot. Judith, you're an idiot. I don't want to go home. Maybe I should just run away? I wanted to just sit here and let the tide swallow me up. I was torn in my thoughts when Crater Hope siren blared. Its piercing noise resounding throughout the entirety of the area. The floodgates had begun to open, creaking and sending great ripples throughout the sea. For a moment I've got all about the pearls as a massive warship entered, deep, dark grey and lined with turrets. The ship was larger than my entire apartment complex, covered in its entirety with markings and faded yellow goo. They're here already? They're early! As it made its way into the crater, the ferals trailing it could now be seen clearly. They broke the surface and their brilliant colours shone like jewels in the murky sea. I looked around for it. It had to be there somewhere. There! A ruby red otter just breached the surface and was the last feral to enter before the gates closed. I wiped a few tears from my cheek as they made their way to the wharf to dock. Dad. Dad was home early. I looked at the box which was still floating the waves in front of me before looking again at Dad's feral. Dad. I took a deep breath and plucked the food boxes off the beach. I need to get home soon then. Dad will be hungry after returning. 
I wondered what I'd say to Mom about that extra ticket. I'd have to explain how that awful man treated me. I just wanted to give her something nice. I felt the burning feeling of anger stir up again inside me. I don't want to do this again. I don't ever want to do this kind of thing again. I stood up and grabbed the box food, still reluctant to go back home and face Mom. If I see that guy next time, then I'll... I'll... I took another deep breath and stormed off back home. I'll never make the same mistake again. Never. I can only rely on Mom and Dad. Only them. Nothing else. Only myself. No one but myself. The pescatarian line was ungodly long for this hour of the morning. I need to work on my wake-ups a bit more. I'll be wasting my time sitting here like this. I leaned against the wall, tray tucked between my arms as I battled the creeping drowsiness. I get used to these kinds of mornings in due time, hopefully. I loosed a great yawn which caused me to shut my eyes tight and hobble over. I felt my tray slip through my paws and jumped as it clashed with the ground. I cursed loudly as I went to pick it up before rejoining the line as swiftly as possible. The river otter behind me, however, took no time in slipping into my place before I could return. He tried avoiding my piercing gaze and ignored me, though the twitching little bastard's tail was a dead giveaway he knew what he did. I took a deep breath and rubbed my forehead. I guess it serves me right for being a klutz. Give this world half a chance, I'll give you a full kick in the ass. I cursed something terrible under my breath which made the otter in front of me tremble. Thankfully the line went by quickly and I swiped a can of uni, some shellfish and a soda before finally getting the fuck out of there. I took a seat and sighed heavily. You're off to a great start, I see. Morning was a bit more crowded than yesterday, but I managed to find a relatively unpopulated table just out of the corner of my eye. Another yawn escaped me as I settled into my seat. What's on the schedule for me today? Think Gil wanted something with me? Then I think the rest of the day is spent on standby and feral maintenance. Nice change of pace from yesterday at the very least. I rubbed the wound on my head and winced. It was still fresh and damp. Hope it'll clear up before I see any action soon. I don't want it messing with harmonisation. As for Gil, wait, he wanted something, right? Right. Right, I think I'll be, uh... He and I'll be doing some sparring, right? I wonder where little shit's at right now. Good morning, Judah! Chapter 3. Illicit. Gil apologised the entire way to the lift which took us to where the training sims were located. He probably should have apologised to the hyena who was in front of me. The guy looked like he was about to rip my throat out. It was a minute or two before we were beneath the Basin of Arda. The air becoming heavy and damp. We arrived at sub-level two before long. The lift's doors opened and greeted us to a blast of well-conditioned subterranean air. Gil led the way, confident in his stride, which is reassuring at the very least. These sub-levels can get... interesting if you don't know what you're doing. It took several turns through the long hallways before finally arriving at a set of automatic doors. The dark lettering above designated it as Sim Room 02. Gil swapped his identification card over the scanner and the doors widened. To my surprise, the sim room was in pristine condition. Very few people were here, giving us a wide selection of training sims to choose from. The floor was glossy and reeked of disinfectant. An area strand of fur could be seen on the lustrous surface. The simulation models were in even better condition. Their surfaces remind me of the speckled cowrie shells I used to collect. Gil beamed at me with a huge grin on his face. Hell yeah, today's our lucky day. I'll mosey on over here and you can take the simulation beside me. Gil pointed at a pair of training sims standing side by side along the wall. I lay myself down in the seat and unwound. The urge to take a long nap on the comfortable material was overwhelming. Ever drive one of these babies before? It's, uh, been a while. These are state-of-the-art feral simulations, some of the most accurate training models I know. Well, we'll see. So, these are the newest versions of The Sims? It's only been a year since the last model. 
I fumbled trying to activate the simulation and jumped as the monitor displayed a blinding white screen, followed by a mechanical voice. Feral simulation model activated. Please select your settings. A window popped up on the screen displaying a series of options. Yeah, jeez. Something the matter? We're training together, right? So, uh... Ah, well, we can train together now using the sim sync, sim sync function. It's easy for me to say. Wait, sync function? We can cooperate with these. Yep, and I'll show you how to set it up. Gil reached over and got uncomfortably close as he fiddled with the controls. I shrunk back to avoid getting in contact, but thankfully he had it all set up within moments. I, uh, thanks. Nothing to it. I was able to navigate the menus from then on relatively easily, and finally I was set on getting into the sim. MST Myrmidon class. Herald build acknowledged. Preparing co-op simulation environment. Please wait a moment. Within moments, the screens filled with a familiar head and displayed an infinite virtual landscape. Activating pseudo-ventriloquist system. Cerebral activity detected. Processing harmonization. Controlling the digital feral was strange. It wasn't tactile feedback or anything the true ventriloquist system offered. Instead of an upright exoskeleton, I was sitting in a rather uncomfortable and claustrophobic seat. Even now, these training models couldn't capture every little thing the real ventriloquist system offered, but movement was sufficient enough to perform basic manoeuvres. The seat rumbled and shifted as I moved around the digital world, which immersed me just a tad more than usual. I imagined hard enough it'd always be like piloting Scarlet Echo again. Gil's feral was right in front of me, designated as user 2 on my screen's hood. I glanced at Gil beside me, who gave me a reaffirming thumbs up. Alright, let's see. Uh, let's try a simple IC Omega colony. We'll try convoy defence. The goal is to eliminate the target while keeping all 10 convoys protected. It'll just be us two, so we'll add on top of our game if you want to beat it. You ready? I guess. Are we using any weapons? I just two short swords. Should deal enough damage to it without slowing us down. Now enough yammering, let's get to it. Gil tinkered with the controls for a while, summoning the ten convoy vehicles which were rendered in much lower quality. Two detailed short swords materialized on a pair of the convoys close to us, the quality difference between them a bit distracting. We engaged into mode A, picked the weaponry up and prepared for our encounter. We're starting off with difficulty 5 colony, I want to see more of your fighting stance and movement while we take on the tougher stuff. I want to keep tabs on the clock, alright? Shay gave us four hours or so until he wants us to hang up for maintenance. Well, let's get this over with, I guess. Aye, show some spirit, man. Can we just start? Ugh, fine. Here we go. A dark shape materialized with moments of guild jumpstarting the simulation. It was a featureless sphere which hovered over our ferals like an incoming asteroid. The sphere's surface pulsated and immediately assumed a more familiar form. Vague approximations of appendages and eyes formed on the sphere's surface as it transformed into a large, bulky ICO copy. Its graphical quality was mediocre, but that movement was spot on. It shook, tremored and crawled about like the ICO I saw yesterday. The accuracy is incredibly uncanny. Alright, our priority is to defend the convoy and dispatch the ICO. We should try lowering it away so we have a safe space to bring it down. Hand me your short sword and assume mo B. I'll hold on to it while you distract it. Uh, alright. I tossed a sword to Gil, which he caught with no issue. I transformed into Mode and rushed to the side, flanking the ICO replica. The training module rumbled and swayed as I bolted around the digital monster. As at its right flank when I shifted back into Mode and delivered a straight punch to its side. I peeked to the side to see Gil's monitor, and he was busy preventing the ICO's advance performing complicated and at times impressive sword manoeuvres as he fended off the replica's appendages. The punch had enough damage to create visible damage effects over the replica's surface. I rushed in with another blow and managed to punch a sizable hole into the ICO's side. Still wasn't paying much attention to me. Was its intelligence glitched or something? I stepped back and made my way towards the colony's head where Gil was located, getting positioned to fire a volley from afar directly at its headpiece. 
The ICO colony made little progress in advance towards the convoy formation. It all but ignored me and focused entirely on breaking into a guild's defences. I aimed the arm cannon in the direction of the colony's head and let loose a burst of gunfire. I'd calculated the tra trajectory just right and the artificial ICO staggered for a brief moment. This dropped its offences for just enough time for Gil to sever its front legs, impairing its movement drastically. The colony leaned over as it lost its balance, eventually crashing face first into the ground. That was a nice shot, Judah. Gil gave me a big thumbs up from the side and I responded with a weak smile. I don't think he even noticed, honestly. Alright, guess we don't need to work on your aim. Now let's see how cl your close combat skills are. Hmm? Heads up. Gil tossed me my sword which nearly skewered my feral in flight. Are you trying to kill me? Just testing your reflexes. The ICO staggered back up and continued his advance toward the convoy, looking slightly more damaged than before. Said this was level 5 difficulty. Yeah, want something a bit higher? I think I can handle something tougher. I won't show much of anything if I'm not being challenged. I suppose you're right. Just didn't want to start off with something overwhelming. Uh, my level 8 difficulty. It's just around what you'd expect from a typical mecha colony. I'll need you to communicate with me properly. we will both have to put in some serious effort to take it down. Fine by me. Alright, uh, now uh, stand back. Gil tinkered with the controls once again and the ICO returned to its spherical shape. Gil and I returned to our convoy and prepared to start the fight all over. I gave Gil the go-ahead and immediately the ICO sphere spasmed this time much more violently. Longer, more menacing tendrils emerged from its surface and lodged themselves into the ground. Its form became far more advanced than the previous replica. Its surface became covered with scales and defensive spikes protruded from its exterior. It was a massive ball of teeth and eyes, again perfectly encapsulating the movement of an ICO. Immediately it raced towards with spikes protruding outwards ready to impale us. Take the left, I'll take right. We split just in the nick of time, the flanks of the ICO fully exposed. Concentrate on the joint, stop it from moving. But the ICO took a massive step backwards and ruined my aim at the joint, causing the sword to fall into its hardened carapace with minimal damage. I could tell this was going to be a rougher battle. Despite its size, it was fast and could react to any of our attacks at all angles. Still, despite how quality, high quality of its movements and brutality was, it was still lacking in comparison to the one ICO from yesterday. It's hard to explain, but it felt just ever so slightly slower and much less terrifying. Maybe it was a different environment, but it was nothing compared to that monster I fought before. Still, holding my skills is important. I'd rather not fuck up in front of Gil, especially this mock ICO puppet. I was never the best swordsman, but I knew enough to at least keep its tentacles away from me. What was Gil doing? I couldn't pick at his screen to get a good look. Any lapse in attention at this point will risk getting a tendril stuck in my feral's chest. Shit, I need to disengage. I've taken out a joint, how are you holding up? I need some help here. On my way, hold on until then. Gil made haste in my direction, thankfully didn't take too long to arrive. Deflecting another attack that would have otherwise punctured my feral. After prolonged engagement I noticed this thing was far more repetitive than the genuine ICO. The attacks were quick and devastating, but easy to telegraph and evade. Perhaps that's by design? I can't imagine how difficult it must be to generate a fully realised ICO AI. By my side, you, don't we have to force our way in? Keep the tentacles off my back and I'll try carving out a wound in its side. We engage the two of us side by side as we close in on the ICO's flank, the timing and rhythm of its attacks growing easy to predict and react to. Eventually it became almost second nature. This led us arrive quickly at its flank while Gil proceeded to slice a massive gash in its side. To you again. I continued the punishment, severing a few tentacles on my way as I made the gash larger. That's it. Our synchronised attack patterns continued, both a weaving and dodging out of the tendrils and continue opening up the gash in size. The colony was clearly weakening. We had ripped a sizable chunk of its body clean out. I ran ahead, ready to finish off with a well-placed volley of bullets into its side. Judo, what are you? Gil wasn't beside me as I rushed in. For a split second, both of us stood there utterly confused. <laughs> that was more than enough time for the tentacles to come home and take a nice sit in by Feral's flank. 
It wasn't long for a dozen more came crashing down and utterly destroyed my feral. The mortals rumbling and dying down softly. Gil grunted, but instead of falling like I did, he did the last of his energy to deliver a fatal volley of shots into the ICO's side, defeating it. It all happened so fast I didn't know how to promptly copy, properly comprehend it. Did I lose to this AI? Was that an experience? Or maybe yesterday was just a fluke? Embarrassment started to creep over me and I sighed with deep frustration. Son of a bitch. Hey man, that was still good. This is training after all. I think I've gotten a better grasp of what you're capable of. Well, how bad did I do? Your yeah, reactions and fighting form were all on point. Got a much better look at your overall performance. I have no real complaints there. Huh. Mm, all right. I do have one problem, however. Oh? Judah, you need to com communicate with me, man. The entire time I felt like I was just talking to you. You barely collaborated or talked to me in the moment. So when you made that move of yours in the end, I had no idea how to cover for you. Communication is a critical skill, Judah. Didn't you learn it? Even yesterday you were pretty hushed the whole time. I... well, yeah, I did. I, uh, frankly sort of sucked at it. Well, that's going to be an issue. I did well enough to pass my exa examinations, but only the bare minimum. Right. I started to recall communications grading and shuddered. Everything else I was doing pretty damn well, just... Hmm. It nearly ended my career then and there if I hadn't picked up the slack. Now I'm falling behind again. Well, anyways, we need to work on that. That communication for a feral pilot is, how Shay would put it, unacceptable, Mr. Bishop. Gil's shitty impression of Shay made him sound more like he swallowed muscle relaxant. Still, the severity of that issue started to become more readily apparent to me. Were the other pilots thinking the same thing yesterday? Was Shay particularly concerned? Already my mind was racing with the possibilities. I'm... Hmm. I said to have the training model to stretch out a bit. I looked at the clock. You'd only been here ten minutes. Well, I see. You want to give it another go? Are you ready to get back in? Not to worry, we'll have that part fixed up in no time. Gil's confidence was infectious and I started to feel a bit better about this whole thing. Tomorrow, though. Tomorrow's another mission, I believe. I should talk to Shay about that when I get the chance. If anything, it only illustrated how critical it was to get this shit down pat. With renewed vitality and a bit of panic, I hopped back into the training module and continued. We spent the next few hours retrying the same mission. This time, Gil really drilled into my head to start talking to him. Sometimes he'd outright kill his own feral to start the mission over I didn't communicate properly. It's honestly kind of annoying, but I guess I can see where he's coming from. Progress was... steady at least. I still felt like I was running into a brick wall over and over again. After all, it must have been our tenth or so mission. Gil hopped out of his module to take a much needed break and I did the same. My ass was starting to hurt too as I also got out, losing a great sigh of relief as my sore muscles were relaxed. Well, getting tired yet? This shit's hurting my eyes. How long have we been at it? Well, I'd say... Fuck! I nearly jumped on my pelt when Gil yelled aloud. He smashed his fist into his forehead, not even wincing despite that painful sound it made on his skull. The fuck's wrong with you, Gil? The time! The time! God damn it! I glanced toward the digital clock on the wall. Been training for nearly four hours together. We were running late for maintenance. Gil looked absolutely livid, his fur on the very end sharp as barbs, it's like he was about to explode. Few people here were looking at us like we were absolutely insane. Okay, Gil, just calm the fuck down, all right? We're, uh, people are staring. Gil sighed deeply, the fire in his eyes dimming, though not completely. He relaxed his shoulders ever so slightly, just enough so he'd actually listen to me. Shit, shit, shit. Sorry, just, ah. Gil stunned at the trading with me following carefully behind. That came right the hell out of nowhere. I was still wary as I trailed him back to the lift as if he might have another burst of anger. We stood in silence on the lift as it took us to the upper levels. Honestly, I too dreaded seeing Shay. What would he say? He had brief flashbacks to how ex absolutely explosive the drill instructors were to slacking trainees. Some even outright struck him in front of the others. Shay wouldn't do that, right? Maybe let me off the hook? But what about Gil? 
Nothing seemed to help ease the anxiety roiling in my stomach, so I had to grin and bear it. Alongside the pissed off dingoes, we made our way back to the hangar. I'm sorry, Commander, I lost track of time and. Don't be sorry, Donato, be better. This is an unacceptable infraction of your time and the dereliction of your duties as feral pilot. Shay's voice was glacial, his brilliant jade eyes born to girl with lethal intensity. Covered with his musculature and the occasional gleam of his gleaming white fangs, the commander was every bit as terrified as I'd expected. Be fifteen minutes late to your duties in front of a brand new member of our squadron. Are you a child? And commander, I... Silence! Gil shrunk back, his tail hanging limp in his feet. Felt pretty bad for him. I mean, I should have helped keep track of time too. I'll be reporting this infraction to Nato, and in the future I'll entrust similar duties to someone more professional. Gil looked destroyed, the shame clear as day on his face. I felt like shit for just standing here. I mean, Gil told me to keep track of time too, and... Shay scared the hell out of me, but should I speak up? If I do, then... Is that a smart decision? The question Shay's authority, especially when I met him yesterday, that'd reflect poorly on me for certain. Would Shay just spare me the brunt of his disdain I knew? Am I that much of a liability to Gil? I fear it shouldn't provoke his ire, but at the same time Gil took the time out of his day to help me. A little shit sometimes, but he did show me a thing or two. Fuck, my mind is reeling, like two creatures pulling back and forth at the seams of my brain. I do. The commander, I... Shay turned his focus to me, those jade tiger eyes like a blade cut into my body. Bishop, do you wish to add anything? I feel I bear some responsibility. I am a new recruit, but I have equal say in time management. I... I glanced at Gillo, looked genuinely surprised. Judah, please. Commander, I just... I wish to bear some responsibility for what happened today. Shay went silent for a moment, never once taking his focus off of me. A noble act, Bishop. However, I entrusted full responsibility to Donato for both of your time today. You are a brand new recruit, after all, and while I refuse to be lenient with any sort of misdemeanor, you just joined yesterday. You know, it's fine. I take responsibility for this. Shay took a deep breath and exhaled as he rubbed his sweat stained fur on his head. Anyways, word came in from above. We're tasked with another escort tomorrow. Radio tower went silent and far south, near resource base Blythe. We'll be taking a repair team over to resolve the issue. We leave at 6am tomorrow, is this understood? We both nodded. Excellent. Now you two should get to conduct a maintenance. Farewell. Shay walked away right then, leaving the two of us alone. Hey. Hmm? Yeah, thanks for that. I, I'm sorry, I really am. Gil, it's, it's nothing special. It's nothing to be concerned about, I just felt like I should be considered as much a member of the team as any. You're a real terrible liar, you know that. Just, just shut up about it, alright? That Shea guy, he's kind of a hard ass. Oh, totally, hardest ass you'll ever see. Oh, he's a bit strict as well, if you haven't noticed. I narrowed my eyes at the dingo, stuck his tongue out playfully. Well, now he got to, uh, see that. I suppose we should go perform some maintenance before Shay gets on our asses again. Right, uh, we should. Hey, um, by the way, before you go, it was pretty fun messing around with you in simulations. You certainly got some impressive skills. I need to know more about your time training. Oh, uh, thanks. So, uh, would you like to meet up together at dinner call? There's nothing saying we have to eat at the cafeteria and all its noisiness. I know a place down near base level. It's a park on level 3's rock shell. It's easy to find you check the guide maps. You really want to eat outside of all places? Only if you're okay with it. Well... Cafeteria is busy and loud as hell, but I don't think I'll ever get used to art or smog. But that's irrelevant. The point is getting to know Gil better and not be a far superior way to connect in the cafeteria. Especially after this morning, anyways. Sure, I'll take you up on your offer. I know it's not exactly fine dining, but, well, it might help break the ice and all. I'm, uh, looking forward to it, I guess. I said you enthusiastic about it. Maybe add a bit more sign to really sell your excitement. You want me to go or not, jackass? Oops, Max is calling. I need to tidy up a plating. Gotta run. 
The other waves he ran towards Flaxen Emperor, which was tucked nicely in its compartment, still covered in dust and debris. Speaking of Ferrell, I looked over at Scarlet Echo's compartment and winced a bit seeing the state of its body. The ICO really did a number on it, its radiant ruby plating and the colour of a chronically impressed stick. Well, I suppose you won't get any better just bitching about it. I made my way towards the monstrous otter, my thoughts on Gil's proposition the mission tomorrow. Ardo's pungent air burned my nostrils as I walked in this park Gil told me about. A lone shelf wedged into the side of the crater which stared on into the bustling cityscape. I tossed one of my shellfish cans into the air and caught it after it spun a few times. Out of the corner of my eye I spotted a familiar golden coat pinched against the backdrop of Ardo's city. Gil was sitting at the fountain, legs crossed on the edge, and tail hoving just barely above the water's surface. His ears poked up as I approached and he turned to face me, a string of meat dangling from his jowls. Fortunately, he swallowed it down before speaking. Hey, yeah. I nodded in acknowledgement of the dingo for taking my seat next to him, opening my can of shellfish in the process. It's already been a day since you started out with us. How's it all settling in for you? It's, uh... It's fine. Gil gave me an unconvinced look. Right. Well, that's good you're transitioning easily. Could be a lot different from manning the artillery, yeah? Yep. I stared at my feet, unsure what to say. I should be getting to know these guys better, but... I just... Maybe this was just a massive waste of my time. Well, now that we can talk more freely, why don't I start getting to know you a bit more? Like, uh, where'd you come from exactly? Oh, oh, uh, shit, this was the question he had to start off with. I wanted to say style and neat, but Gil looked genuinely curious. Should I just lie, or...? No, muscle through it, Judah. I drew a deep breath inwards. Create a hope. Gil's ears flickered slightly and the frown spread across his face. Oh, oh, oh well, well. Uh, sorry, uh, man. Uh, it's fine, okay. I'm used to it. Gil blinked, and for a moment I immediately regret telling the truth. Well, if it's all right with you, uh, I wanted to ask what Crater Hope was like. I stopped eating halfway and gave him a quizzical look. Normally they'd shut up about it immediately, and the conversation would just die right there and then. What it was like. Yeah, the design of Crater Hope always interested me. It's also so close to the actual ocean. I, I'm sorry if I'm crossing boundaries, but I'm just curious. I swallowed. Those memories flooding back to me. The wharf, the sea, the transparent semi-dome letting light stream in from all directions. I felt a strange longing tug in my chest. A longing for the days long since gone. Well, it was a lot brighter than these conventional craters, that's for sure. I had no idea everyone else lived in the dark like this. Alright, I hear you can see the sunrise and set each and every day. The sunsets. I do miss being able to see them. Of course, I also meant you had to see the ICO lurking around. Oh, uh, yeah. You could look up and there'd be some multi-legged fucker walking along the surface. As long as they weren't at the entry floodgates or large enough to pose a threat, the garrison just let them be. So you must have seen ICO since you were a pup. Wow, what's that like? I... don't know. It was just a thing in Crater Hobie acknowledged. Even mega colonies? Yes, it was rare, but somebody saw the garrison fighting them off. Of course, there's nothing compared to being up close to them like that. My dad would... I stopped dead in my tracks as a surge of pain welled up in my chest. I stammered for a moment as I envisioned his face smiling back at me and the smell of his well-worn coat whenever he turned home. Gil looked at me, his ears bent at an angle. Hey, are you alright? Yeah, I... I'm alright. Great hope, uh, yeah, you want to know what the ocean was like, right? Gil gave me a concerned look but went along with my shitty transition. Yeah, it must have been awesome to get so close to the ocean. I've always wanted to see it myself. Is it like super salty or slightly salty? Everyone says it's salty, but I don't know how salty they mean. Uh, moderately? It tastes like salt, definitely. Maybe I was just used to it. Gil's eyes were a pair of full moons glowing with curiosity, like a child staring at a succulent piece of candy. 
Can you tell me more? Well, uh, sure, what do you want to know? Ah, uh, hmm, uh... Sharks! Did you ever see sharks? Or, uh, all those weird jelly things? Jellyfish, I think? Oh, and what about crabs? You eat them, right? How do they taste? Oh, and... Whoa, 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 slow the fuck down, alright? For fuck's sake, let me breathe. Heh <laughs> sorry. Alright, well... I explained to him about all those different things. The whole wild girl was utterly engrossed in my explanations. It kept asking questions, some of which I didn't even know the answer to. The pain of thinking about hope melted away, and I found myself also getting quite into teaching the dingo about all these things. By the time I was done, Gil looks, still looked dissatisfied. And, uh, that's really all I can think of at the moment. That's alright, thanks. I, I really appreciate it. Why do you want to know all, the, all about that stuff anyways? Oh, uh, no reason, I guess. Really? No reason? Oh, do I need one? That kind of stuff just fascinates me. I've never met someone who gave a damn about it to this degree. I mean, it's not like it's anything super special. Well, it's still a part of the world that was conserved. All those old world creatures in something that at least resemble their former habitat. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess since you asked me all that, why do you start telling me about yourself? Oh, me? At least you can do for bombarding me with those questions. <laughs> Alright, well, what do you want to know? Well... What should I ask Gil? Well, he asked us. Let's ask him first. Now, what about you? Where are you from? Born and raised in the pit, pit of Urbane. Crater Urbane, huh? You ever been? It's a lovely place. It smelled less pungent than ardor, that's for sure. Crater Urbane. I remember how alien it was stepping out of a conventional crater for the first time. Compared to hope, it was dark and dreary. People living deep inside the crater's pit with only thin pillars of light from the apertures above. Better than ardour, at least, but still not quite home. It was, uh, her. Huh. <laughs> that bad, eh? Don't worry, I'm not offended. It wasn't all terrible, just spent only a few months there before I joined the ardour garrison. Ah, I see. Well, I feel I'm more familiar with the place. But aren't the twins just stunning to look at? The twins were Bane. Seemed to be all they ever advertised about the place. The one thing I remember most was first seeing those massive towers shooting up from the centre of the crater. Their sheer size would make anyone feel insignificant. Oh shit, yeah, that's what I remember most, for sure. My mum actually worked at the very top. She was a telecommunications executive. Helped manage the twin satellite dishes, connected with overseas craters, stuff like that. Uh, what? Your mum had a job like that? Shit, dude, that's... That's fucking amazing. Gil blushed and shrunk back, a sheepish expression crawling along his face. Oh, well, yeah, it's... It's nothing. Nothing? That's one hell of a career. Gil shrunk back a little, his tail wiggling uncomfortably. It was pretty neat, though. On occasion, I was allowed to be brought up to the higher levels. Up there, a bane wasn't so dark anymore. On a clear day, you could see for miles across the landscape. It was wicked. I mean, nothing much to see, though, right? Well, no, you can see a lot. Like rocks and debris? Listen, if you're there, you know what I was talking about. It's different. So you got CICO from a young age as well. Gil's ears poked up. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Keeping them away from the twins is always a huge priority of the Urbane Garrison. I never saw direct action myself, but the amount you can see from the upper levels, you could spot mega colonies several miles away. That sounds... terrifying. Hmm. So, girls from Urbane. Guess I should have recognised that sort of drawl. Even Mom was starting to drop that sort of Urbane charm whenever we talked. A part of me even felt a bit nostalgic about my time spent there. I wonder if I'll ever be able to go back sometime. Any reason he became a feral pilot? Gil turned his head upwards to the ceiling of Ardra and contemplated for a moment. Hmm, well... My pops was in the military as a feral instructor. Guess I've always been close to this sort of thing. I didn't get to see him often since his work, but when I did, I always had so much to ask him. Really? Yeah, he was never a pilot himself. He knew about all the systems and different models. Huh. That's... that's really neat. 
I uh, suppose I just followed him there then. Gil cast a glance to the side, looking like he wanted to add something but decided against it. I miss my folks, Pops, Mom, my bro. They're the reason I've come this far, so I want to do them proud. You have a brother? Oh yeah. Older or, or much older, by five years at least, I'm the young of the family. You have siblings yourself, Judah. I know, I was wondering what it's like. It's interesting. We got a lot of spats here and there, we always had each other's backs. A conflict, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Gil beams with a big toothy grin on his face. So, because of his father too then. Still, I feel as though he hadn't told me everything. It's never as simple as that. I wanted to pry, but maybe that's not such a good idea. Still, I wonder... You've been here long? Well, I suppose you can say that. Squadron 15 formed half a year ago. I think it was just me, Shay and Felix at the time. Did you know them from before? Oh, Shay and Felix? No, Shay was just assigned a sniper a moment and do some general cleanup around the outside of the crater. I didn't know Hugo, though. I was hella stoked when he showed up. We trained at the same facility, and I guess he was fortunate to be sorted into Shay's squadron. Huh. How lucky. As uncommon as you might think, people who train in the same facility tend to go for the same garrisons. Must be nice knowing someone then. Only six months? Makes the whole new guy thing feel a bit less awkward. Still, they had that amount of time to forge these kind of bonds. What should I top that exactly? Yeah, just shut up, Judah. I'll get to know them eventually, just... I wish I could stop fucking thinking sometimes. I finished my can of shellfish and looked upwards to the apertures. It was getting late. Gil and I sat in silence for a while, occasionally making small talk that ultimately never went anywhere. The sun outside the crater must have been setting. The natural light flowing into Arda was becoming a golden shimmer. She'll should probably get back soon. Curfew's going to start in a few hours. Hmm, yeah. You can go on ahead. I'll spend a few more minutes out here. I'm finished my dinner after all. Well, okay, don't be late again. Gil huffed. I won't, all right? Just making sure. I hopped to my feet, carrying the empty cans with me. Before I could walk further away, however, Gil spoke up. And, uh, hey, Judah. I turned to face him. Uh, yeah? Uh, thanks for today. I'd like to get out whenever possible. You're working really hard back at the simulation, too. I guess, uh, I just want to congratulate you on making as a pilot, rookie. Uh, thanks. I didn't know exactly what to say, so I forced a crooked smile. Still, I did find this small get-together to be genuinely enjoyable. I was even getting used to Arda's pungent smog a bit. For once, I started to feel... comfortable. Yeah, I... Well, thank you, too. You've been very welcome to me, and uh, I appreciate it. Gil looked like he'd burst out laughing. Yeah, no problem, bud. My face flushed a deep crimson, and I turned away. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm... Uh, I'm going. I hastily made my way back to my dorm room. The thought of curling up in my bed once more made the fatigue hit me all the harder. Before I left the park, however, I took one last glance at Gil. I could still see him sitting at the edge of the fountain looking upwards at the aperture's dwindling light. He sat there and moving. Not taking a bite of his leftovers or even wagging his tail. The light from above was fading. The golden rays turned a deep orange and eventually a subdued amber. In a split second the light vanished altogether and Arda was now bathed in a cool dim glow. It was evening now. The park lights buzzed on and the cityscape was coloured a deep purple hue. I turned away and stared bar back at Arda's cliffside and made my way back towards my comfortable little dormitory hidden snugly at the very top. Be continued. So there we go. That was ICO, and hopefully the next update will be recording the video much sooner. There's been a bit of a gap between the main update and the video, but so I'm trying to keep back to the uh, more once a week. And I know this one is a few days late, based on that it should have been done on Sunday. It's Thursday. But we will uh, get on with that. And uh, next video, I can tell you, will be password Dean's route. And Monday all being well. I know I'm doing too, 
two on one weekend. So it's a Labor Day weekend after all. Let's get this done. There will be something else, which I'm not going to tell you about yet. You'll have to wait till Monday to find out. But before we go, let's not forget the uh, credits. Cetus is responsible for the line art and script for ICO. Cody Opulus, then the colour in art direction. K Sound Kaiju. If you want to check out their channel, find it all the ICO rules. And a huge special thanks to Dirk the Red Panda for programming help, Badger with writing and art direction, and Nano for creating the code and assets the screen animatics. That's one thing I like about this community of people who create uh, furry VNs. Everyone really wants to help each other out. And if you want feedback or you want questions about stuff, how do I do this? People will tell you. It's really nice. So there we go. ICO will be continued next time. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>